Well, thanks again for the ride home, Dirk. I'll see you at Tuesday's Jazzercise class. I'll see you then. Okay. Unless I see you before then. I mean, if you wouldn't mind, maybe we could go out. My Dirk, did I just hear you ask me for a date? Are you deaf? I heard him from here. <laughs> so, Blanche, um, you think maybe we could have dinner Saturday night? Well, why don't I just check my date book and I'll let you know. Sure. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, isn't this an interesting turn of events? Gosh, I just don't know what I'm going to do. You know, he is a little bit younger than I am. <laughs> Watch your step, Mother. That's a girl. Oh, oh, Rosie, I haven't been a girl since 1912. <laughs> Why, look who's here. I want you all to meet my mother, Mrs. Lindstrom. This is Blanche, and this is Dorothy and Sophia. Very nice to meet you. Tell me, how was your trip? It was just fine. <laughs> Which one of them is hard of hearing? Mother, we just didn't want you to have to strain to hear us. But there's nothing wrong with my ears. Oh, of course there isn't. Now, you sit right down here, and I'll fix you a little snack. <laughs> well, how long will you be visiting with us, Mrs. Lindstrom? Oh, only a week. Then she's off to Houston to see my brother. Is your name Mrs. Lindstrom? <laughs> Mrs. Lindstrom, how would you like a little tour of our home while Rose is fixing that snack? Oh, I don't think this is a good time for that, Blanche. Mother's had a big day, and I don't want her to get overtired. Well, she can skip the East Wing, Rose. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Now, come on, why don't you take a little nap while I fix you something to eat? Rosie! I'm not a child. I don't need a nap. Oh, there's nothing wrong with taking a nap. Bob Hope takes naps. Unless he's in the bedroom now taking one, I think she'd rather stay here with us. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, please, I know what's best for my mother. Come on, honey, let's get you unpacked. Right down there. Right on. Seems like a very nice lady. Yeah, too bad Rose won't get off her back. Mm. You know what I think? I think I can handle this relationship with Dirk. I'm going out with him Saturday night. Was there ever any doubt? Momentarily. This is strictly off the record, but Dirk's nearly five years younger than I am. Then what, Blanche? Dog years? <laughs> However, I have decided to overlook that minor detail and succumb to the Vesuvius of passion that is about to erupt from me. Stand back, we're gonna get something on us. <laughs> I am talking about what's happening between Dirk and me. It's something really special, something fragile and rare. I've only felt this once before. <laughs> it was during my 17th summer, and I was working behind the cosmetics counter at the Rexall drugstore. I was stocking the Maybelline display when I I heard this booming voice say, excuse me, ma'am, where are the cuticle scissors? <laughs> I turned around and there he was, our eyes locked, and for one brief moment, there was nobody else on earth but the two of us. Please, Blanche, Sidney Sheldon tells shorter stories. <laughs> I know in my heart, if I'd just followed my feelings that day at the Rexall drugstore, today I would be Mrs. Andy Griffith. <laughs> What? I'm not going to make the same mistake with Dirk that I made with Andy. Didn't she tell us that story before? Yes, but the last time it was Woolworth's a toenail clipper and John Cameron Swayze. <laughs>